if you summarize it, it's just five years of education plus the last year where you do the final thesis project. It's optional, you don't need to do a master's. I have three technical classes and then three design history like AutoCAD, Rhino. Rhino, you start from the first week, literally 50-50. Nice balance, right? Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. After months of not filming anything, I'm finally back with the most wanted video on my channel. And yes, you guessed it right. I'm going to be talking about everything you need to know about studying architecture in Spain, specifically in Madrid. As some of you guys might know, I'm currently on my fourth year of architecture. I'm like surviving <laughs> this journey. And I believe that the experience I have allocated throughout the, these years is finally enough for me to give some useful advice and information about studying architecture and specifically in Spain. This video is going to be mainly uh, focused on the, the university and the academic things you need to know, like more about the course itself in depth and compared with other countries. I'm currently in my fourth year of architecture in Seu San Pablo in Madrid in Spain. But before I started <laughs> any of this like this journey, I obviously applied to university uh, with my ILTS and my IB diploma. So I did the International Baccalaureate program in North Cyprus and that is the main thing um, a lot that which allowed me to get accepted to this university. If you want to study in English and obviously architect, you need to have a certificate that shows your English level proficiency, obviously, and mainly the certificate that they ask for is ILTS. I don't specifically remember what was the requirement, but obviously I'm going to put the link of the university and like the old application information specifically that they need. If you need to study in English, that means automatically you have to apply to private universities. In Spain, if you have C1 level of Spanish, you can apply to public universities and study architecture. Also in the public universities, obviously it's going to be cheaper, much, <laughs> I mean, there's that distinction with the language. So private versus public universities. How long does it take for you to become an architect in Spain? This is a very interesting question because it's kind of like subjective. It's not very objective, but the objective thing is you have, you study architecture for five years, you start the university and your course is automatically five years. It's not like three years and then you graduate, you have your bachelor's degree, you have like, like a diploma for architectural design, and then you apply to another university or the same university, you study uh, like a master's degree for another two years and then you get your diploma and then blah 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 it's not like that it's basically because that's for instance like in italy but in spain it's a bit different like you start the first year in the university that you applied to and got accepted to accepted into and then you basically complete that five-year journey in the same university or you do erasmus obviously like things like that the whole degree usually takes place in one university. The master's degree is on top of that, so it would be five plus like two or something else, but it's optional. You don't need to do a master's degree in Spain to be an architect. Five years of education, 100%, you need to fulfill that, and that's for sure. Most people, I would say, <laughs> do not finish in five years because it's, it's very intense, but let's be optimistic and say, you finish those five years perfectly, doing fine, and you graduate, right? After that, it's not finished, obviously, because architecture is never easy <laughs> in whichever country you go to. So after those five years, you have to do another extra year for, you have to devote that year for your final thesis project that you have to develop and finish, and you get like a mark out of 10. And if you pass, that's when you become an architect and you have your signature, you have everything fully finished, your diploma, your final thesis project done. And yeah, you are basically now an architect in Spain. <laughs> if you summarize it, it's just five years of education plus the last year where you do the final thesis project. A lot of people do work during this final thesis project 
kind of like part-time in architectural firms that either work online or like you can do an internship. Another thing that the university has organized recently is that these final thesis um, projects people, <laughs> they have to come to the university once a month with all the teachers that are uh, in the final uh, thesis project course to help you and like guide you. You basically, there's like juries, you have to like present how you're doing, like the, the process of your design. They give you feedback. You can ask them like questions. You can basically come to the university and like ask the teachers anything that you, you need to. And you, ha you can have tutorial times with them. The main difference compared with America or England, I would say, of countries like Spain and Italy is that their architecture education is based on this 50-50 idea, let's say. The perspective that I have on architecture, and you will see this in the whole course structure, is that it should be 50-50. So 50% based on classes that evoke your creativity, so like design classes, um, drawing classes, art classes even, you'll see or urbanism, urban design, history of architecture. The 50% of the, the classes you have is dedicated to design, so like architectural design. And then the other 50% is obviously dedicated to technical subjects. And this is very interesting because in the first three years, I would say, or the first two and a half years, this technical part is very devoted into you're like developing the base knowledge you need in order to actually study the technical subjects you would need as an architect. So the first couple of years, you will only see things such as like very general things such as physics, maths, uh, geometry don't really seem like they related to architecture at first, right? It even feels like the continuation of high school, in my opinion, like almost like IB, you know, physics, maths, geometry things like that in the first years that's why i said the first years feels like this like base knowledge like getting you ready pepped up for the actual architecture part kind of similar to that idea also the other 50 percent that i talked about relating to creativity and design also is very like base knowledge vibe in the first years so <laughs> drawing classes of perspective that kind of gets you ready into sketching when you design and having this general idea about like graphics and using programs before architectural design. So instead of starting to design buildings, houses, blah, 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 like things like that right off the bat when you start university, what they do is they give you all the tools you need to have before you start designing. So sketching abilities by hand, obviously. Um, programs like AutoCAD, Rhino. Rhino, you start from the first week, literally. They teach you from the first week. This is something I loved because they literally sit you down and during these classes, they teach you how literally to use these programs. All the tools you need to know before you start designing anything. The first two years of the university might feel, might make you question like, Am I really studying architecture? Because I'm not really seeing things that really relate to architecture, like compared to other universities where they literally make you design things for, from the first month and you build models and blah, blah, blah. Like, but it's very different. Like it's a very slow, steady uh, journey, let's say. Once you push through that stage, I would say of two years, uh, you suddenly see why you started this journey because you start with the design courses, the technical subjects, instead of being physics, maths, geometry, they become evolve into stuff like building construction, structural classes, mechanics classes. For instance, like we have dimensioning classes right now in a fourth year for dimensioning and choosing the steel profiles or yeah profiles you would need for the beams or the columns of the structures that you design so it's like it becomes suddenly extremely related to architecture but in a sense you're ready because you have all this base knowledge of physics and maths and geometry and things like that that you saw in the first year for instance i didn't see one class even one class of physics because i only did chemistry and biology and things like that in high school 
and I started physics in university. And if I didn't have that background uh, in the first years before starting all these like structural and like, construction like classes, it would be like a mess, like literally chaos. So that's why they start you from the first like basic things. I'll see off three years of getting you ready to the other <laughs> second years, I would say like the, the, the fourth and the fifth year generally, where you literally are only doing classes strictly related to architecture. And also there's a lot of classes related to urban design, urban planning, introduction to urbanism. In a sense, you're also like you could literally work as an urban designer like after you graduate you will obtain a really good knowledge related to urban design and urbanism as well which is obviously closely linked to architecture that's the general view summary 50 percent creativity design drawing arts yay other 50 percent <laughs> very technical maths calculations construction things um very detailed drawings of construction and structures, mechanics, those things. 50-50. Nice balance, right? So this is the part what I think most people are going to be a bit shocked because I was also shocked when I came to the university and I got my timetable, right? I was like, wow, like this is literally crazy. For the full five years program, you're going to have full five days with classes, right? So you're going to have classes five times a week. For sure from the first year until the fifth year you're going to have five times a week classes every day period like that's for sure and then these classes every day are going to be for six hours so <laughs> that's for sure i mean welcome to majid <laughs> and so it kind of feels i'm not gonna lie when you first start i didn't expect this it really feels like high school because in the first years they really care a lot about attendance so the atten attendance you need to have in the university is around 75 percent so you need to go to classes or sometimes 90 percent for some classes by the way you need to go to basically i think the best advice i can give is go to all classes like you have to go you have to attend as many classes as you as you can at the first half of the semester so like I'm not even talking about the first semester, like the first half. Try to go to classes as much as you can, obviously, because you need to have attendance, like, and it's very serious in our university. And I know some students who, who have failed some classes just solely because they didn't attend the classes enough. Like the attendance is lower than 75%. So the teacher literally notified them and said, by the way, you're not gonna take the final exam because your attendance is not enough so you basically automatically fail the class there's gonna be a lot of days where you end up staying at university the whole whole day so get ready for that if you're planning to come to spain obviously between these classes so the classes are kind of like you know like sandwiched together so there is not like a lunch break there is no actual in the schedule it looks like you have two hours of history and then two hours of maths and then two hours of physics for instance but Thank God the teachers usually allow you to come like 10 minutes late or you can leave like 10 minutes early. So there is like very small breaks between the classes. So that's why I said it's intense and it feels like high school because it's literally six straight hours of class every day. So there is this like idea of in the first year uh, you have morning till uh, midday classes. And then in the second year you have evening classes so from midday until evening how they suddenly changed from morning till evening in the second year was a bit shocking for me because i didn't understand why but you understand why because <laughs> a lot of people they have realized that a lot of the students they have to retake they fail they don't pass the classes and they have to retake a lot of the classes and for them to be able to continue with the second year classes and or kind of do like a mix of second year classes and the, the classes they have to retake so they're not behind is this is the solution that they came up with so the first year you will have morning classes and the second year you will have evening classes and then the third year you will have morning classes fourth year evening classes fifth year morning classes <laughs> so it's like a it's it's like a mix match so you can basically retake classes 
without having to extend like another year or like another semester because you can take it at the same time while you're taking your third year classes, your second year classes. Your classes basically start at 8.30 and then they end at 2.30. No gap in between, six hours. And then in the second year, you switch to the evening um, routine, <laughs> let's say, and your classes start at 2.30, they end at 8.30 in the evening. So you have to get used to having late dinners as the Spanish culture is. That's why it finishes at 8.30 because they think it's normal to eat after 8.30. <laughs> I think it's normal now as well, but... So once you get used to it, it switches to the evening. And then another year passes, you get used to the evening and it switches back to the morning. So it's like this constant, like, <laughs> switching. <laughs> it's kind of annoying sometimes, obviously. Um, this is where the 50-50 thing actually applies. You're going to have three technical classes and then three design, history, creativity types of classes. In total, it's going to be six per every semester and there's 12 per year. And that's why it's quite dense because there's a lot of exams. Uh, you will have midterms, you will have finals, you will have to pass everything in order to, to pass that course, um, that class, and um, a lot of submissions, obviously. So this university is quite demanding in terms of attendance, in terms of passing, the exams there's a lot of exams and then obviously the submissions i'm not even like going to mention because everyone knows that submissions are the thing in architecture most of the time you're going to feel like you're basically studying a dual degree in architecture and in civil engineering <laughs> trust me the responsibilities that architects are given and the power you have when you become an architect in Spain. Because when you get your signature and you have, you are basically like an architect in Spain, you have to sign all the documents, the technical documents of your building. So that means if you're signing them, it is your responsibility if a building collapses or there's something wrong in the construction or there's something wrong in the, the structure. I would say that this is a huge advantage because when you study, two degrees basically of like civil engineering and architecture and even if you don't work in Spain and you try if you want to work in other countries with this education you're going to have you're going to basically be very very appealing to a lot of the architectural firms because you you are going to understand hopefully <laughs> when you graduate you're going to understand everything that the engineers say to you for instance like you, you will have your own opinions related to like construction the, to the structure of the building and everything so i think it's a huge advantage that the other countries with their education for architecture they don't really provide you with because they don't give this intense um technical education for you like they only mainly focus on the design for instance in the uk or in america so i think it's a huge opportunity if you are someone who is kind of like an all-round player, like who is good in technical subjects, but is also creative. Uh, if you're planning to study in Spain, to look at yourself objectively and see if you're willing to actually learn this much about the technical things. Because I know most people, when they start and when they think about architecture, they mainly think about the design and the creative parts. And if you're only signing up for architecture and like uh, wanting to study architecture for the design aspect and you want to become like a more expressive you don't want to even cross to the technical side like you don't want to know you're saying like it could be like that like i'm not saying not I'm, i mean not everyone has to be an architect and a civil engineer and like does everything like an architect does that does everything from zero to 100 by themselves but that's the idea that spain has like even if you don't start with this huge interest for that part of architecture i think you would you kind of in a way grow to like it and enjoy it because you realize how important it is for your buildings and for your designs to know these things and it slowly becomes being more interesting for you let's say also like i have mentioned at the start of this video this is like a series i'm going to be filming more videos especially the video that i just i mentioned at the start related to the living expenses, accommodation, more about like the culture here in Spain and also like the student life 
you are going to have kind of when you start studying in Spain and especially as a foreigner so stay tuned for that if you're curious about the social aspect of this so if you're interested in those types of videos stay tuned to my channel subscribe and like this video if you if you thought it was useful also comment questions if you have any questions i'm gonna reply to them always reply to all of the comments so and i'll see you in the future i'm going to upload way more often hopefully this semester was very tough and i was very busy but i'm planning to focus a bit more on youtube and help the students out there so yeah see you Bye-bye.